Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. Today, I have a very special guest with me today. She is a nail artist. Please welcome Maddox McCullough. Hello, Maddox. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited. That's good. You're so welcome. So I want you to talk about where were you originally from and how did you get started into the nail industry? This is a weird one, but just buckle up. I mean, it's not that weird. Um, So I am from the U.S. I'm from North Carolina. That's where I live now. I went to school in Rhode Island. And right after I graduated, I went um, applying for different jobs and stuff, you know, as one does. And I got an internship with a fashion company that I really wanted to work for. And I didn't know when I was applying and going through the whole process that that company was in Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, And I never thought about Berlin. I mean, I don't know a lot of people in the U.S. that are like, yeah, Germany, like, let me move there. Right. But I had already kind of committed to that company and I was really attached to the idea of working there. So I ended up moving to Berlin right after I graduated college. Mm -hmm. And that job did not work out at all. And I ended up just kind of being in Berlin, needing a way to make income. Right. And I had some art on my Instagram and some makeup looks. I used to do some really intricate like face painting and things like that. And there was a nail salon there called Isla Berlin. And Mm -hmm. the owner pretty much like just reached out to me on Instagram and was like, do you want to train to be a nail artist? Cause you look like you're a <laughs> right. nail artist. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, I needed money and um, I thought, wow, that's cool. And when they start like that person, um, the owner of Isla, that's the name of the salon. She right. introduced me to like the nail art world and mm. I was thinking, oh my God, like this is amazing what people paint on nails. And I was just, I totally fell in love. So I worked there, got my certification in Germany, found my way back to the US Mm -hmm. um, eventually. But the reason I started um, my kind of online business with press on nails is because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people um, had to turn to that because couldn't work. I mean, I think I was out of work salon work for six months probably total Mm -hmm. and gotta get that money so yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) I had to find some other way so that's kind of the situation okay that's a really cool story so like in terms of like people who really inspired you was there any nail artists or any artists in general that have inspired you to get into nails Ooh, man I have like a long list um Let's see. I, the first person, I think this is for a lot of people I saw, she's a nail artist from Miami called Crocane and she has a really Mm -hmm. individual style. I know a lot of people say Crocane, but that's the honest truth. Like, right. I love Crocane. There's an amazing artist also from London called Fuego Nails. And I loved her style. I thought it was really bold. Um, but the amount of artists that I follow on Instagram is just kind of absurd. Like, I think that's another way that you really can improve your work. That's kind of a side note. It's just by like consuming other people's work and engaging with the community. Mm. Um, I have so many artists that inspire me every day. Mm. Yeah. 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 I could definitely agree with that. Like I get inspired by a lot of new artists around the world, you know, from Serbia, Russia, things like yes. that, you know, yeah, I've checked out Crocane's work. Crocane is a very good artist. Um, Spifster's very good. Um, the editor, yeah. um, Spifster, she's a, a nail artist from Chicago. Know. Ooh, I'm gonna have to write that one down. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk afterwards about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm always looking for new people. That's amazing. Yeah. And also like, there's another artist like from Serbia. Her name is Koska Bojana. And she does like these long, extreme nails. Like they're very, very good. That's what I'm about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're really, really cool. And also like there's another um, nail artist. It's like, well, it's actually two women who own their own nail salon together. It's called Nuka Nails in the UK. And oh, it, yes. Anastasia Anuska and uh, Caddy from the West. They're very good nail artists too. I love them. I definitely know Nuka Nails. That's, that's, another, that's another inspo from the way back at the beginning for me, I was like, (laughs) she did not paint that. She printed that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, You would think 
you would think that, but it's actually like it's all hand painted. So I thought that was like really, really cool. Like Me their too. intricacy to detail is like spot on, especially with your work. Like your work is very interesting Aww. and you know, you. To detail. So, like, how could you describe your art style? I would say probably detail oriented. Mm -hmm. I really like. I find that if I do a set of nails that takes me like three hours at the end, I'm like, oh, I don't know how I feel. Like I like, <laughs> it's so bad. I like to do sets that are really involved and um, plan and well thought out, which is kind of not conducive to a salon environment, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, that's why the press-ons I've been able to make really kind of um, highly intentional stuff, I guess. Right. Um, I do love working in the salon too. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. I would describe my work. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like overdone. Maybe. <laughs> Just like, yeah. Yeah. Cause like you do a lot of cartoon characters, like ranging from yeah. like uh, Adventure Time or like maybe like Barbie or something like that. So like I like how your work, you know, you do very well with, with cartoon characters, you know, so that's the whole thing. So in terms of owning your own salon, what has been your experience owning a salon and what are some pieces of advice for someone who wants to own their own salon or studio? So I never actually owned a salon. The salon that I worked at, a lot of people thought that all the girls that worked at the salon I did in Berlin, they thought that we like, <laughs> they had just assumed that we would own it and we we're like, no, we don't own it. <laughs> right, exactly. But um yeah, I haven't owned my own salon. I hope that I will be able to do that once I'm a little bit more established here in the U.S. I only moved back here like a few months, maybe five months ago. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to answer that question in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mo most definitely. Now, in terms of press on nails, so you have your own press on nail business and you mm -hmm. have your shop online. So how did you get started with like selling press ons and what are some pieces of advice for someone who wants to get into the press on nail business? Ooh, I have a, I, I could read a whole scroll about advice I have for that. But um, again, the, the way I mainly got started was because of the pandemic out of need. Um, mm -hmm. And we had a lot of clients from our salon who were requesting them because, you know, you have regulars and they're like, I need my nails. So my salon that I worked at actually sold like removal kits and they sold press-ons as well. But I kind of wanted to get into more of a market of people that really wanted something like super one of a kind, not very simple, you know, like a highly specific mm -hmm. custom design. And I guess my advice for people who want to start a press-on business is to not spend that much money up front. Um, mm -hmm. You don't really need that many colors you don't actually need that much supplies if you want to start and you can do it in a way that has not very much overhead, mm -hmm. um, you know, get some cheap like nail extensions from Amazon or something like that. Don't need to go out and straight away buy a full room of a prey gel X, you know, Oops, sorry. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. but um, that's what I would say. And I would also say, stay true to your style and make work that, when people see it, like, hmm, how do I say this? Like, you'll probably get a lot of requests for like really simple nails. And I tried to kind of shy away from that so that um, people see what I like to do and they want to, they come to me for my style. They don't come to me for plain colors or like portrait nails, which are amazing, right. but that's not really my, or what I like to do. So right. there are other artists that could do that. So just try to stay true to what you like and don't feel bad about, um, you know, getting some kind of cheaper materials while you practice and right. just keep it low key and you can just build up over time. Right. Yeah, most definitely. Now, what's your take on pricing? Like, how does one go about pricing a set of press-ons, whether it's like hand painted 3D or whatever the case, like, what's your take on pricing? Pricing is really tough. I mean, I get a lot of hate for my prices. Um, but just the amount of hours that it takes me, I can't, I don't want to price them lower than that. Cause I feel like I'm not respecting myself. If I do, like I would make no money at all. Um, and I think the way that 
I do pricing is just sheerly based on the amount of time that I will have to spend on that set pretty much. Um, the only thing where I would price it higher for something that wouldn't take me more time is if I'd already done the design and I really wasn't keen to do it again, but mm -hmm. I would probably be honest um, with a client about that. And usually th when that's happened, they'll be like, never mind, I want something else, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that just keeps it fresh for me as an artist. And yeah, pretty much the longer a set takes, um, the more highly I price it. <laughs> right, exactly. And also too, I think also considering too, like the materials you use, you know what I mean? Whether it's like acrylic or gel, um, like just how you, you know, you paint in terms of your art style, you know, and how much time you put into it, like how you, like how you said too. So I think it's also the materials which can, you know, impact the cost because you're using high quality products. Totally. So, that's, that's something I should have mentioned. So thank you for that. I only use like expensive things now. Mm -hmm. um, and I price for that you can you don't have to do that like certain clients they don't want they don't want that you know um they would rather pay less and have something that maybe will last them a little bit less long or they don't mind they can't tell the difference um mm -hmm. but I can tell the difference and I my clients can tell the difference so I mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's most definitely you know true because like you know and plus it just depends on you know, whether like with the client too, like especially if you're doing custom, you know, if they want something simple or something over yeah. the top, you know, and when you do something over the top or with more detail, the price is going to go high. Exactly. So that's the whole entire thing with that. Now, what is your take in terms of the progression of like fashion and nails coming together? Because like in the fashion industry, you see a lot of designers working with nail artists doing like these cool, you know, nails for the models and to make it cohesive with the collection. So what's your whole take on that in terms of fashion and nails coming together? Oh, just keep going. Just keep it going. Like, I love it so much. I think to me, nails are an accessory and they should be paid attention to on the runway or mm. the same with hair. You know, it's like a, it's an opportunity and there's no reason to ignore it. And I think it just, there's been a lot of development in terms of nail art techniques and nail art um, products, you know, and the things you can do now are just insane, especially with um, full cover tips being more popular and being able to just press them on for mm -hmm. fashion shows and stuff like that. The things that you can do are like amazing. Nails by May, um, Mm -hmm. someone who inspired me she does a lot of work with in the fashion industry mm -hmm. and I I can't wait to see how much farther it goes um mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that have worked backstage at shows and things like that and I would love to be able to do that one day it sounds so cool yeah yeah that's the same with me I would love to do that one day like with a designer and do these nails like for their collection because I think that it's really cool to see with different brands like Pierre Moss and many other brands like the Blondes, especially CND works with the Blondes a lot every year to do yeah. like these cool, intricate nails. And so I think that we're getting a lot more recognition in that industry. And because the thing is, the thing is, is that with nails, it's just as much of a fashion statement as clothes. Yes. You know, I so. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and so like when you have nails and, you know, the whole garment, it just, you know, it brings harmony to the whole look. So that's my agree. And also, you know, nails are a total art form. And I think there's been a stigma about them being cheap or I know there's been a stigma about that in the United States, at least. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw it also in Berlin when I worked there. Right. And that is just garbage. I'm sorry. So I hope that people will start doing nails as more like couture, um, high fashion, expensive. I mean, you know, right. people spend hours on these amazing designs and I think they should be recognized for that. And it's starting and I can't wait to see how much farther it develops. Yeah, me too. Yeah, same. So in terms of what do you think about the whole progression of the nail industry? Mm, I mean, I feel that I haven't been in the nail industry for that long. I kind of feel like a baby because <laughs> I've only been doing nails. I guess it's like two years now I've been doing nails or two and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so 
from what I've seen, I guess my, the most exciting thing for me, the direction that the nail industry is moving is like, um, I see all these really interesting like sculptural nails and almost nails moving into like jewelry. Um, mm. I know Lady Gaga used to do that as, you know, back in the early 2000s, she was always right. ahead of things, Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> right. yeah, I think that's really cool. Like there's this like, I love you so much nails on TikTok. People send me that girl's TikToks all the time and they're really cool. Like she puts fruits and nails and does all this mm -hmm. stuff. So I hope that the nail industry is moving in a more experimental direction, I guess. Mm -hmm. like 3D nail art and stuff like that. Um, and just clients willing to try more things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that because like, you know, with the nail industry now, it's getting so much into like the whole thing with 3D you know, jewels and, you know, there's certain trends that are coming back also, you know, um, having the long nails, like the, the tight strokes, like the cool, quick strokes and everything, the flames, the flames, nail art. That's oh, the flames, <laughs> so <many> flames, God, <laughs> yeah, that's they're so good. They, they're beautiful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty much like the, the trend, one of the trends in the nail industry, you know, that yeah. a lot of people get. So I think we're also with the nail industry now, like it's progressed so much in terms of nail products. So you have like 3D um, sculpting gel, poly gel, you have yeah. gel and acrylic with all these types of crazy colors, glow in the dark acrylic it's and, amazing. and things like that. So you have different uh, UV lamps and things like that, that'll help with the nail services. So it doesn't take very long. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, especially the press on nail business, a lot of women, you know, especially us as nail artists are taking on the, the press on nail uh, business and, you know, selling our artwork because this is stuff that we spend our time on. Um, so that's the entire thing. Now, what's your whole take in terms of the nail education system, especially where you live? In, well, in North Carolina, in the U.S., they're very strict. You the reason I'm not taking nail clients now is because I have to go back to school because they don't, they don't accept certificates. They don't even accept certificates sometimes from other states in the U S mm. um, and they did not, they don't accept my certificate from Berlin. So I have to go back and <laughs> go for like um, two months. I think my problem since I haven't been to nail school in the U S mm. but I've heard from other nail techs is that you're not actually learning a lot of nail techniques. Like mm -hmm. you don't even learn. Have, have you been to nail school in the U.S.? Um, I, yeah, I have. Like I live in the U.S. and I took uh, cosmetology courses in high school. So before I okay. went to college, I got my cosmetology license, like around like 18. Nice. Years. So, nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you're, you're well-versed, but I mean, did they teach you how to do nails there? Like, did they teach you how to apply acrylic and everything like that? Yeah, so they taught like the basics of nails, like how to do a sculpture nail mm -hmm. and, you know, how to do a manicure and a pedicure, but that mm -hmm. was essentially it. So you don't really get in depth learning and things like that, especially, you know, I think with the nail education system or the beauty education system, it could be more in depth about like nails or certain aspects of beauty. So that way yeah. we're more prepared in terms of offering different nail services. Yeah. So that way is not this thing of where we have to go and spend a lot of money on nail courses. And the thing is like with me, after I got my license, I had to learn a lot of different nail stuff, nail trends and techniques on my own, you know, especially during when I was taking uh, cosmetology courses yeah. um, in high school, learning different nail art techniques, you know, on my own time, you know, cause they're not teaching me certain things. So. And did they spend a lot of time teaching things that you thought like, okay, I don't really like, I was looking up the course book, but I, I had to take like a computer class as part of my credit. Right. And I was like, okay, I don't know what you're going to teach me, but I think I know how to use a computer. Like, I don't know. I, I just think it could be a little bit more focused and right. like, I mean, you need, I know they spent in Germany, they spent a lot of time on health and safety stuff, mm -hmm. um, like ASHA type things. Mm -hmm. But I, I think also there they could have gave a lot more in terms of 
actual techniques or talking about trends and where to source supplies. That was a difficult thing for me when I first started out, not knowing kind of which brands I was kind of like, where do I even buy all this stuff? Um, right. So yeah, because then you have to go right out of school and then you, you're like, okay, well, I'm not prepared. And you got to spend more money on other classes. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And also, too, they don't teach you in depth about like the salon business, especially yeah. like owning a salon or owning like doing booth rental or own your own studio or having a home salon. That's yeah. something they don't teach a lot either. And especially like how you said with safety and sanitation, like that could have been taught a lot more in depth, especially how to work with different clients and things like that, you know. Um, like whether they're, you know, they have a condition or they're disabled and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that should be taught, especially in beauty school, especially in nail schools. So yeah. that way it's more preparation for what to expect when having a business and yeah. things of that nature. Well, you need to be able to do everybody's nails, not just the nails of one kind of person. Right. And of course that should be covered. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of things lacking about the <laughs> nail industry or the nail school stuff here and cosmetology in general from mm -hmm. other nail techs. One other thing I want to say is I still think there's a stigma against going to cosmetology school. People are like, oh, you're in cosmetology school. I'm like, listen, like, you know, this is a, <laughs> this is a legit thing. This is not mm -hmm. like I couldn't get into some other school. So I decided to go to cosmetology school. Like somebody has to cut people's hair and do people's nails. Right. And, you know, we're professionals. Like, can we get some respect? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing with that. So I think definitely with the nail education system or in beauty in general, it just has to be improved a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and especially, you know, another thing too is just the fact is I see a different parts of the world learning these all these different nail shapes extreme nail shapes and all these other techniques and we don't learn that as much in the U.S. like how they do in Russia or Hungary or like in uh -huh. Spain or Italy you know what I mean so I think you know if we learn those here you know I think or we learn like a bit more of like honing that preciseness with like gel and acrylic mm -hmm. nails and stuff like that I think uh, I think the U.S. in terms of the nail uh, scene would be enhanced a bit more. So Do you, did you find that it was just like conservative shapes that you learned, like just like round short nails or when you were in nail school? Um, so pretty much it was just like short, uh, small nails, like how to do an almond shape, maybe like a French tip. That's essentially it. I love my French tips, but... I understand what you're saying. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Now, what is like your whole favorite uh, art medium to use when creating nail art? I use primarily gel polish. I, I would like to get into more 3D stuff, but I just haven't really had the funds to invest in like a proper, uh, like different colors of acrylic and everything like that to really build um, 3D shapes, but I want to get into that for sure. I, I pretty much, I admire like all the people with like the jewels and Swarovski mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And also people that do really um, innovative stuff, like putting the fruits and vegetables and nails, but that's mm -hmm. not really my thing. I really do like just the meditative, like detailed painting. Um, so I kind of stick with that, but yeah, I just use gel polish and I use also different liner gels. I have like white and black liner gel mm -hmm. so I can get that nice crisp line. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some pieces of advice would you give for someone who wants to get into like designing like cartoon characters, like whether it's like Cursed Cowardly Dog or like Adventure Time and things like that. So how important is it to have that intricate data to make sure like with the character that the person wants, it looks like the character? I think that you don't have to be necessarily like the most precise, like HP printer or painter to mm -hmm. capture the essence of characters. I don't think that's necessary. That's just kind of a stylistic choice in my opinion. Like there's plenty mm -hmm. of absolutely fantastic nail artists that 
you know, maybe their the character isn't like a carbon copy, but it looks amazing, you know, and it doesn't matter because we just register it as that character anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but my biggest piece of advice to people is that if you see something and think that you could never do that, you can do it for mm -hmm. sure. And that everybody starts somewhere and don't be hard on yourself. I put a lot of videos of my old nails on TikTok so people can see where I used to be. You know, it's not like um, you just arrive at being this amazing um, nail artist. You really do have to build up to getting there. And mm -hmm. I think I got kind of discouraged at the beginning, like when, I mean, this is no fault of any nail artist, but I would look at certain nail artists like Anushka and I was like, that is not something I'll ever be able to do. But if you practice, you could definitely do it. And when I'm drawing characters, I try to pay attention to um, the proportions and do like, I outline the character first and look at how all the elements, like I kind of try to break it up into geometric shapes in my mind and see how they all relate right. to one another and then fill it in. Um, yeah, but I would just say practice. You'll just get there naturally, you really will. Um, I just really want to encourage people to just go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, most definitely. I think practice is definitely key, you know, especially yeah. when it comes out of doing char characters and especially, you know, doing your own style. Like I have a distinct style. Like for me, I like doing my own characters and plus I like doing abstract type of work. So, yes. you know, and especially once you develop your own style, it's like, it's unique to you. That's the thing. Uh -oh. And another thing, too, where I see with, like, nail art, especially with, like, illustrators, they make the character, like, say, for instance, if it's, like, Curse or Cowley Dog, yeah. they can make it uniquely, like, their style, you know, yeah. or, like, Spongebob, you know, mm -hmm. you change up the eyes or the mouth and things like that, and it'll still look like Spongebob. So yeah. I find that to be very, very fun and very cool. Now, how would you define success in the nail industry? I have a very definitive answer for this one. You are happy making your work and you are getting clients or selling press-ons or whatever means of business you're doing. And that's pretty much it. I see a lot of people, and I used to be one of these that upset that their social media isn't growing or anything like that. And I had a nail artist kind of like call me in one time um, and it was very helpful to me on Instagram. She was like, listen, if you have your clients and you're doing work you love, like who cares? I mean, you don't need, like, you don't need TikTok. You don't need Instagram. Um, and that's kind of extreme to say, I guess. Right. But past a certain point, you don't need them. Like maybe, you know, you need it a little bit, but once you have your client list, then you're good to go. And don't really stress too much about the social media. And you may find that once you stop stressing about it, suddenly you gain a bunch of recognition or whatever, but right. I, I think you're successful if you're just doing the work you love and you have a good relationship with your clients and mm -hmm. I, I, that's enough, you know? Yeah. That's the thing too. And also too, is like, you know, preparation meets opportunity. You know, you never know what opportunity arises for you to progress, especially honing your skill and I think that's most definitely important and, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, especially like how we was talking about the press on nail business. I think anybody can really do it. And it's never too late to start. No, and, you no. know, that's like with anything. It's never too late to start, no matter what age you are and things like that. So as long as you get started and put yourself out there, you know, there's TikTok, Instagram, things of that nature. So as long as you put yourself out there and you market yourself and market like, hey, this is the work that I do, you know, eventually yeah. you'll get some sort of traffic where people can have interest in your work and the money will come. So yeah. I think that's very important as well. Now, what are some tips in terms of balancing work and daily life? Oh, I'm horrible at this, <laughs> but I'll try to give you a tip. Um, <laughs> I would say that and I'm bad at it, but keeping, if you, because we work from home, I work from home as a press on nail artist. A lot of press on nail artists probably work from home unless they have a separate studio space. Um, I would say, just try to keep a defined schedule if you can. Um, 
and know when to stop. Mm -hmm. I think that has been hard for me in the past that I just, and it's hard when you're an artist, you're like, I'm in the zone. Like I want to finish this, but I think in the long run, it'll be better for you to, um, you know, try to work your hours and then call it a day. Don't look at TikTok, shut down Instagram. Um, I felt myself wasting a lot of time, just like scrolling, you know, right um, all the time. And the other thing I would say is to minimize distractions when you are working, mm -hmm. I, which is absolutely top level importance to me because then you have like quality work time. It's kind of like getting quality sleep. Like you can't have quality sleep if you're like my situation, my cats are jumping on my head or meowing or biting me, which they oh, try right. to do every night. Um, but it's the same thing with work. Like you're not going to get to that deep work level if you don't minimize distractions. So mm -hmm. that's how that's the best. And here I am saying this, I'm sure if my husband was in here, he's in the other room, he'd be laughing hearing me <laughs> say that because <laughs> I'm really not good at it, but, um, mm -hmm. What can happen, I think, if you don't do that is you burn out, which is bad. Right. Is then you're just like, oh God. And uh, yeah, that's, that's never good. It takes more, more time and effort to recover from the burnout in, a lo in the long run than it does if you just would pace yourself in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think self-care is everything, most definitely. You got to take care of yourself first before you take on other things. And plus, that's how you maintain work ethic. Because yeah. I know when I see a lot of people within, you know, the hustle culture, it's like hustle hard and work hard and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, grind and, and hustle, but you got to take care of yourself while you're doing that in the process so you can maintain being healthy and you can live a long time, you know, especially for your kids and, you know, yeah. friends and things like that. I want to say also that, a lot of these social media apps, they're businesses, you know, their right. job is to get you to stay as long as possible on their platform. Right. And they create a lot of FOMO. If you don't post for one day, our algorithm's going to like shoot you down and your like life will be ruined or whatever. Mm. But that's just right. not true. I'm just going to announce that right now. That's not true at all. And I'm like, I have like the proof of it. Like I didn't, I made my TikTok like two years ago and then didn't post on it for an entire year after having posted a bit. And when I start posting again, it, you know, small views at first, but goes right back to normal after a while. So don't be afraid to take a break if you need it. Like just take your break. It's going to yeah, be fine. Yeah. Everybody will be there when you come back. Yeah. That's the thing too. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take breaks, you know, and just like, sometimes like how you said, you know, learn to, you know, just stop what you're doing and, and take a step back. Mm -hmm. You know, because especially within your work, you don't want to rush your work, you know, because you do want to really take your time with what you're doing and things like that. So, yeah, but most definitely, like how you said, you know, self-care is very important. And when you need to take a step back, take a step back. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of with social media, where can people find you on social media and how can people support your work? Ooh, so um, my Instagram handle is ball pit addict, mm -hmm. ball pit underscore addict. I got stuck with that terrible handle because that's what it was as a joke in college. And now I've changed it and people were like, where's your account? Oh God, like what happened? <laughs> so my account is ball pit underscore addict. And my TikTok mm -hmm. is ball pit underscore nails. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you for jumping onto the show. Um, it's great to meet you. I love your artwork. Your style is very unique. And I love the work that you do, you know, because I can tell you really put your time and effort into the nails that you do. Thank you. Thank and you. with the promo posted I put up on my Instagram, I like the flame nails you did. So I put those up. I was like, these oh, are cool nails, you know? That's great. Whichever one you like, you should put that up. <laughs> yeah, so it's on my Instagram. But yeah, you know, thank you so much for supporting me. And, you know, your work is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for jumping onto the show. Thank you. It was so awesome. I'm very excited to see it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, take care, Maddox. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Good to see you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care and stay beautiful.